Hi, I'm here from Niche Advice. Um, hope you're well. I thought I'd talk to you about documentation and what documents are actually needed to get a mortgage. Um, I get a lot of these questions at the moment around documentation, so I thought we'll just run through the basics. Um, uh, on a mortgage bog standard, I suppose, mortgage residential uh, uh, application, you will need proof of ID, proof of address. So that's basically certified copies of a passport, a driving license, uh, and normally two forms of uh, uh, address, so utility bills, credit card statements or other financial sort of statements you can get. Um, they will need to be uh, original, so we need to certify them uh, and we need to obviously make sure uh, that they are uh, uh, within the last three months. That's really important when it comes to the proof of address. Um, then we move on to uh, proof of income. So generally we need last three months bank statements. Uh, that's really important that they're actually three months. Uh, the amount of times we receive documents where they're two or three days off uh, the lenders want exactly three months bank statements, so from date to date. They will need to be, they can be online or originals. Um, when they're online, they need to have the HTTP address on there. So um, if you're going, if you're looking at the bank statements, if they're printed online, it should have, I don't know, HTTP address, barclays.co.uk. Now, there's a little trick to it, actually. If you actually go to Barclays yourself and print off uh, the PDF statements um, from the Barclays website, they don't actually have the HTTPS address on there. So, but if you had to go for a Barclays mortgage, they would want the HTTP address on their bank statement. So, how do how, how do you get around that? And this is the silliness with some of the lenders. Um, the way you do that is you go by the date terms. So you'll actually go and say, look, I want my I want to see my statements in the last three months from this date to this date, and then press print. Once you do that, it will automatically put the HTTP address at the bottom of it. And Barclays are not the only ones. I've seen a number of lenders that don't have HTTPS address on their standard statements and you've got to do it a different way. So bank statements are really important, obviously, because they show everything, incoming, outgoing, your salary coming in, what other expenses, the amount of times we have people um, not put it in their regular expenses. I don't know, you see nursery costs going out, you'll see child benefit coming in, but there's no children disclosed on their application form. Um, you will see, I don't know, HB finance, car finance not disclosed. So um, that's why lenders want to see bank statements and that's why we want to see bank statements. Um, together with the bank statement, and that generally has to be through all your accounts. So um, it's no point just doing a bank statement for one account and it's got two transactions in there. Um, lenders will, will be able to see from a credit. Um, then we will need uh, pay slips. Um, now most pay slips are no electronic formats, but from a pay slip you can sort of identify, I don't know, gym membership, pension contributions, um, earnings to date. That's really important. If you're telling somebody that you're earning 50,000 pounds, but really your earning to date is showing 20,000 pounds, the lenders would want to know why, and there'll be some questions asked. Have you had a pay rise? How long have you had the pay rise for? So it's really, really important. Uh, uh, the, the pay slip is provided. Three, some lenders want six months. If there's additional income, for example, so uh, if there's commission, um, there could be you know uh, additional overtime or commission. Some lenders want to see six months, but majority of the lenders want to see three months. Then we get into the realms of deposits. So they would want evidence of the build-up of the, of the deposit. And that's really important. It's not just the deposit amount, but actually how you got to that amount. So uh, if it's £50,000 in the, in the savings and you're using that for your deposit, they want to see that's your savings. So they want to see how that money's been built up. Are you actually saving £50,000? So it's really, really important. Uh, let's turn this down. Um, and in, again, you've got... Uh, uh, from a deposit perspective, a lot of people are now receiving gifted deposits. So they would want to see um, uh, who, who the, who's, who's making the gift. They would want proof of ID, proof of address from the person who's making the gift. Last three months bank statements from the person that's making the gift to make sure that the money's theirs. And generally would want a standard letter signed. It's a templated letter, which we have most lenders accepted, which basically says, I so-and-so, I'm gifting so-and-so X amount of money. Um, I've got no interest in the property and it's an outright gift. That's important because the lenders would want to make sure that this person making the gift is not going to become an owner. So if you stop paying your mortgage, you're, they're going to come out of the woodworks and say, oh, actually, I've, I own a share of this property. So gifted deposit, that's really important. Now, some people say to me, well, I went to my bank and all they asked for was um, a gifted letter. They didn't ask for any of this stuff. Well, yeah, that, that's right, but the solicitors will ask for it. Um, so you might as well have this information up front. And 
often the amount of things we, we find when we receive gifted letters or gift is disclosed. They say they're receiving a gift and it ends up being not a family member, but their cousin or their friend. Now, a lot of lenders have got rules around this. Majority of them will only accept gifts from close family members, blood relations, mother, father, brother, sister, grandparents. So um, and there are some lenders that will do cousins and aunts and all sorts, but we need to identify that. There's no point going, if you're lined up to go to X lender and they will not accept the gift, we will need to know that up front. So it's very, very important we get that um, sorted out. Um, so we've done the gifted deposits. Then we, we're looking at um, other circumstances. So if you've got bad credit, we want to see a credit report, um, maybe with an explanation of what actually went on, why, why you got into yourself in trouble in terms of the credit. Um, if it's more serious, like banks, bankruptcies or IVAs, we need some documentation around that, debt management plans and so forth. Um, if it's buy to let, we will need tenancy agreements. Um, the other additional sort of bit to this is I've just talked about the employed. Now, when you go to self-employed, it's a little bit different. Nobody wants to see pay slips. They would want to see um, uh, last year's tax returns and the year before's tax returns. So um, if you're a limited company, they would want to see your accounts together with your tax calculation. So your own personal, um, they used to be called the SA302, but you know your HMRC filed returns, tax calculations. Um, generally, lenders want to see two years of it. We do have, obviously, lenders that will just work off the last years. Um, but if you've got two years, we will ask for two years. Um, and then, obviously, we'll use the last years or, or whatever the lender criteria is. So self-employment applicants are a little bit different. Uh, they would want uh, the accounts. Now, some uh, it really depends on what you're looking to do. We've got contractors. You can go off contracted, daily rates, and so, so forth. But this is just a general um, sort of overview of what's required and why it's required. Um, then really, uh, it's, it's around um, how you send these documentation off. Generally, uh, we want them to be originals. Um, initial stage, they can be uh, scanned and sent to us, but certainly we want to see uh, everything um, to us. Now, there are more documentation. There's obviously terms and conditions by the lenders. There's property forms. There's declarations. But this gives you an overview of what's required for a, uh, a mortgage in the UK at the moment. Um, if you have any more questions, you can give us a call on 0207.